on immaculate perception. When the moon rose yesterday I imagined that it wanted to give birth to a sun, so broad and pregnant it lay there on the horizon. But it lied to me with its pregnancy. And sooner would I believe in the man in the moon than in the woman. Indeed, he is not much of a man either, this timid nocturnal rhapsodist. Truly, with a bad conscience he wanders over the rooftops. For he is lecherous and jealous, this monk in the moon, lecherous for the earth and for all the joys of lovers. No, I do not like him, this tomcat on the rooftops. I am disgusted by all who creep around half-closed windows. Pious and silent he wanders his way on starry carpets, but I do not like any soft-stepping man's foot on which a spur does not jingle to. Every honest step speaks, but a cat steals away across the ground. Observe, cat like the moon approaches, and dishonestly. This parable I give to you sentimental hypocrites. You, pure perceivers. I call you, leches. You too love the earth and the earthly. I found you out. But there is shame in your love and bad conscience, you resemble the moon. Your spirit was persuaded to despise the earthly, but not your entrails, and they are the strongest part of you. And now your spirit is ashamed to do the bidding of your entrails. And out of its own shame it takes the paths that sneak and lie. For me what is highest, thus speaks your lying spirit to itself, would be to look upon life without desire and not like a dog with its tongue hanging out, to be content in viewing. With dead will, without the grasp and greed of selfishness, cold and ashen grey in my whole body, but with drunken mooning eyes. To me the dearest thing would be, thus the seducer seduces himself, to love the earth as the moon loves it, and to touch its beauty only with the eyes. And to me the immaculate perception of all things would be that I desire nothing from things. Except that I might lie there before them like a mirror with a hundred eyes. Oh you sentimental hypocrites, you leches! Your desire lacks innocence, and now therefore you slander all desiring. Indeed, you do not love the earth as creators, begetters, and enjoyers of becoming. Where is innocence? Where there is will to beget? And whoever wants to create over and beyond himself? He has the purest will. Where is beauty? Where I must will with my entire will. Where I want to love and perish so that an image does not remain merely an image. Loving and perishing. These have gone together since the beginning of time. Will to love. That means being willing also for death. Thus I speak to you cowards. But now your emasculated leering wants to be called contemplation. And whatever allows itself to be touched by cowardly eyes is supposed to be christened beautiful. Oh you besmirchers of noble names. But that shall be your curse, you immaculate, you pure perceiving ones, that you shall never give birth, and even if you lie broad and pregnant on the horizon. Indeed. You take a mouthful of noble words, and we are supposed to believe that your heart is overflowing, you liars. But my words are meager, despised, crooked words. Gladly do I pick up what falls beneath the table during your meal. For with them I can still, tell hypocrites the truth. Yes. My fish bones. Muscle shells and thorny leaves shall tickle the noses of hypocrites. There is always foul air around you and your meals. After all, your lecherous thoughts, your lies and secrets are in the air. Dare for once to believe yourselves, yourselves and your entrails. Whoever cannot believe himself always lies. A God's mask you don before yourselves. You, pure ones. Into a God's mask your horrid worm has crawled. Indeed, you deceive, you, contemplative ones. Zarathustra too was once the fool of your godlike skins. He had not discovered the coils of snakes with which they were stuffed. 
I once imagined seeing a god's soul playing in your play, you pure perceivers. Once I imagined no better art than your arts. The distance concealed snake filth and foul odor from me, and that the guile of a lizard lecherously crawled around here. But I came near you. Then daylight came to me, and now it comes to you, the moon's fling is at an end. Look there. Chagrined and pale he stands there, before the dawn. For she is coming already. The glowing one, her love for the earth is coming. Innocence and the Creator's desire is all solar love. Look there, how she glides impatiently across the sea. Do you not feel her thirst and the hot breath of her love? She would suck at the sea and drink its depths into herself in the heights. Now the sea's desire rises with a thousand breasts. It wants to be kissed and sucked by the thirst of the sun. It wants to become air and height and footpath of light and light itself. Indeed, like the sun I love life and all deep seas. And this I call perception, all that is deep shall rise, to my height. Thus spoke Zarathustra.